Good morning and welcome to St. Bartholomew's Episcopal Church, our online worship for this, the first Sunday after Pentecost, Trinity Sunday, as we worship together even while we are physically apart from one another. We are delighted to have you with us. Blessed are you, our holy and living God. Eagerly we seek you. Your loving kindness is better than life itself. Our lips shall give you praise. So will we bless you as long as we live and lift up our hands in your name. Jesus said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Our song of praise this morning is a spoken canticle that comes from 1 John. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was revealed among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through Jesus Christ. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent his son that sins might be forgiven. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought also to love one another. For if we love one another, God abides in us and God's love will be perfected in us. The Collect of the Day. God be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is the story of creation, adapted from James Weldon Johnson's God's Trombones, based on Genesis chapter 1, beginning with the first verse. And God stepped out on space, and he looked around and said, I'm lonely. I'll make me a world. As far as the eye of God could see, darkness covered everything, blacker than a hundred midnights down in a cypress swamp. Then God smiled, and the light broke, and the darkness rolled up on one side, and the light stood shining on the other, and God said, That's good. Then God reached out and took the light in her hands, and God rolled the light around in her hands until she made the sun, and she set that sun ablazing in the heavens. And the light that was left from making the sun, God gathered it up in a shining ball and flung it against the darkness, spangling the night with the moon and stars. Then down between the darkness and the light, she hurled the world, and God said, that's good. Then God himself stepped down, and the sun was on his right hand, and the moon was on his left. The stars were clustered about his head, and the earth was under his feet. And God walked, and where he trod his footsteps hollowed the valleys out and bulged the mountains up. Then he stopped and looked and saw that the earth was hot and barren. So God stepped over to the edge of the world, and he spat out the seven seas. He batted his eyes, and the lightnings flashed. He clapped his hands, and the thunders rolled. And the waters above the earth came down. The cooling waters came down. 
Then the green grass sprouted and the little red flowers blossomed. The pine tree pointed her finger to the sky and the oak spread her arms. The lakes cuddled down in the hollows of the ground and the rivers ran down to the sea and God smiled again and the rainbow appeared and curled itself around her shoulder. Then God raised her arm and she waved her hand over the sea and over the land and she said, bring forth, bring forth. And quicker than God could drop her hand, fishes and fowls and beasts and birds swam the rivers and the seas, roamed the forests and the woods and split the air with their wings. And God said, that's good. Then God walked around and God looked around at all that he had made. He looked at his sun. And she looked at her moon. And he looked at his little stars. She looked on her world with all its living things. And God said, I'm lonely still. Then God sat down on the side of a hill where he could think. By a deep, wide river, he sat down with his head in his hands. God thought and thought till he thought, I'll make me a human. Up from the bed of the river, God scooped the clay. And by the bank of the river, he kneeled him down. And there the great God Almighty, who lit the sun and fixed it in the sky. Who flung the stars to the most far corners of the night. Who rounded the earth in the middle of his hand. This great God, like a mammy, bending over her baby, kneeled down in the dust, toiling over a lump of clay till she shaped it in her own image. Then into it we blew the breath of life, and all of you, all of you, became living souls. Amen and amen. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks, thanks be to, to God. God. The Canticle Response from A Song of Creation by Janet Morley all you works of God, bless your Creator. Praise her and glorify her forever. Let the wide earth bless the Creator. Let the arching heavens bless the Creator. Let the whole body of God bless the Creator. Praise her and glorify her forever. You returning daylight, bless your Creator. Twilight and shadows, Bless your Creator. Embracing darkness, bless your Creator. Praise her and glorify her forever. Let all who live and grow and breathe bless our Creator. Praise her and glorify her forever. Our second lesson is a reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of Holy Spirit be with all of you. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me. Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in love of friend and stranger. The Gospel of Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. 
And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Here ends the reading from the Gospel. It's been a week, hasn't it? A couple of weeks, really, though it's grown more terrifying and disturbing as it unfolds. For a preacher, today presents a very full dance card, Trinity Sunday, steeped in racism and violence against black and brown people, layered with the national weekend to wear orange against gun violence, in addition to which, as a community, we are grieving the death of Sandra Scully. On an emotional level, it seems right that people across this country should be wearing orange this weekend, honoring Sandra by sharing her passionate determination to prevent gun violence. Sandra, I am wearing my orange stole for you. But as I prepared to preach, given the week we've just had as a nation, it felt at first like there were no words. Then I realized it's not that there aren't words, it's that they've all been said before. As each email and news blast goes by, all I can think is that we've been here before. Though that's not quite right, it's that we've been here all along. We are still here, despite the words, despite the deaths, despite the protests. We are still in this place of violent, sustained racism in our systems, in our understanding, in our cultural DNA. Dismantling all of that requires us to dismantle ourselves our way of life, our identity, our history, our understanding of who we are as Americans and what that means. We may call ourselves allies and we may mean it in our hearts in the heat of the moment. But if we want to move forward so we're no longer in this loop witnessing violence bred by our inherent national and personal racism over and over and over again, it takes more than being a passive ally. The truth is, we have to be willing to do more than speak the words, share the posts, be outraged, even protest in the streets. We have to be willing to see our own blind spots, to be changed ourselves, and to force our systems to change so we are no longer part of perpetuating this evil. And here's where the truth of the gospel helps us. Jesus came to turn the world upside down, to change the way people understood everything, their lives, power, righteousness, who matters and who doesn't, that the wealth and power and position of this world are not signs of rightness with God, just the opposite. Wealth, power, and position are often the very things that keep people from obtaining the kingdom of God. Because God's ways are not the world's ways. God's ways are ways of love. God's peace is built on justice. God's grace is rooted in mercy. 
Jesus came to show us what God's grace and love look like in action. And Jesus is very clear that in order to follow him, people have to give up everything. Not just things, but family ties, their place in community, all they've known about who they are and what they thought life would be. They are no longer James and John, sons of Zebedee. They are disciples, followers of the way of Jesus. After Jesus ascends to God, the disciples are sent forth, empowered by the Spirit. And now the responsibility rests on them. They are to share the good news of God's salvation, this new way of being and understanding the world, God's way, the way Jesus showed them. Living in community, pooling all they owned so everyone had enough, seeing to each other's well-being. They established communities in which they were no longer classified, stratified, or divided, no longer Jew nor Greek, slave or free, male and female, but one in Christ Jesus. They live as beloved children of God together in community, loving God and loving neighbor as self. It's a completely different way of being and understanding. And to get to that place, they have to be willing to be undone, and then, and only then, reclaim their creation in the image of God, living as God's own. As Jesus told them in John's Gospel, the world will know they are followers of Jesus, disciples, if they love one another as Jesus loved them. Embodying the love of God for all people is their new identity. Remember, being a Christian wasn't easy or convenient, and it certainly wasn't economically or politically expedient. It was never meant to be. This isn't a part-time experience. Join the club and visit us on Sundays. It's a way of life, a way of seeing the world, a way of responding a whole new framework, and it could very well cost everything. But what good is it to gain the whole world and lose your soul? Friends, in order to be remade in the image of God's beloved community, in order to claim our true identity as children of God, we have to be willing to set down an awful lot. We have to be willing to be undone to our core. That's what we can do about this perpetual ongoing racism in our country. Start with ourselves. Be willing to see how our being privileged majority has been at the cost of others. How the systems we benefit from and have for generations are built on the poorest of the poor, predominantly the backs of brown and black bodies and on the land of indigenous people. And it's not just inherent in our history. Racism is built into the structure of every system in this nation. Banking, education, housing, healthcare, law enforcement, the justice system, our military, our politics, even our personal perceptions of power, strength, beauty. Our theology of good and evil, white equates to light and good, while black equates to darkness and evil. If we're going to begin living into the dream God has for all of us, It all needs reframing, rebuilding from the ground up, starting with ourselves. 
The core of the Black Lives Matter message is that our lives and our systems need to function as if we believe that's true, that black lives matter as much as white lives. As Christians, black lives had better matter to us because we can bet they matter to God. Our God is the God of the marginalized, the oppressed, the impoverished. When God chose to send God's son to walk on earth, both God's own and fully human, he was embodied as a brown-skinned Middle Eastern Jew. He was sent to save God's people, to stand with the poor, the outcast, the persecuted. It doesn't take much imagination to know where God stands when it comes to Black Lives Matter. Personally, I think God's broken heart finds some solace in the enormous letters painted on 16th Street in front of the White House. They spell out Black Lives Matter in yellow highway paint. Just before you reach the newly renamed Black Lives Matter Plaza. Which means that the Episcopal Church recently featured against their will, following a presidential press conference, would no longer be the famous Church of Presidents, St. John's Episcopal Church, Lafayette Square, but St. John's Episcopal Church, Black Lives Matter Plaza. I know it's a small thing, but I find some consolation in that. As we acknowledge our collective grief and anger, a prayer on this Trinity Sunday from the Celtic Daily Prayer Book. Into my grieving, I weave the strength of the Father. Into my grieving, I weave the compassion of the Son. Into my grieving, I weave the comfort of the Spirit. Into my grieving, I receive the presence of the three in one. Into my anger, I invite the patience of the Father. Into my numbness, I invite the healing of the Son. Into my confusion, I invite the wisdom of the Spirit. And we shall grieve together, I, in community, with the three in one. Amen. Friends, God is with us even now in our grief and anger, in our desire for wisdom, for a new perspective, in our willingness to change our country, the systems that perpetuate racism, and even ourselves as we strive to live into God's way of love for all of God's children. To help us move forward, I'll be sending a list of resources. It's not exhaustive, but it's thorough. It includes some of the materials from the Sacred Ground Racial Reconciliation Curriculum some of us have been engaged with all year. Friends, it's time to begin the difficult work of becoming the people we are meant to be, truly loving our neighbors as ourselves. May God, creator, son, and life-giving spirit be with us every step of the way until the end of the age. Amen. Our affirmation of faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth? I believe and trust in God Almighty. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed the world? I believe and trust in Christ our Savior. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God? I believe and trust in the Holy Spirit. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. 
We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Prayers of the People Let us pray for the Church and for the world. God of love, we pray for your Church. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Thomas, our bishop, for all lay and ordained ministers, and for all who seek you in the community of the faithful. Equip us with compassion and love to carry out your work of reconciliation in the world. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the congregations of St. Albans in Cape Elizabeth and St. Nicholas in Scarborough, and for students who are graduating. And in our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Mexico. God of love, hear our prayers for the church. God of freedom, we pray for our nation and all the nations of the world, for peace and unity across barriers of language, color, and creed, for elected and appointed leaders that they would serve the common good, inspire all people with courage to speak out against hatred to actively resist evil. Unite the human family in bonds of love. God of freedom, hear our prayers for the world. God of justice, we pray for the earth, your creation entrusted to our care, for the animals and birds, the mountains and oceans, and all parts of your creation that have no voice of their own. Stir up in us a thirst for justice that protects the earth and all its resources, that we may leave to our children's children the legacy of beauty and abundance that you have given us. God of justice, hear our prayers for the earth. God of peace, we pray for our community, for our local leaders, for our schools and markets, for our neighborhoods and workplaces. Kindle in every heart a desire for equality, respect, and opportunity for all. Give us courage to strive for justice and peace among all people, beginning here at home. God of peace, hear our prayers for this community. God of mercy, we pray for all in any kind of need or trouble, for those whose lives are closely linked with ours and those connected to us as part of the human family, for refugees and prisoners, for the sick and suffering, the lonely and despairing, for those facing violence, for all held down by prejudice or injustice. Awaken in us compassion and humility of spirit as we seek and serve Christ in all persons. We pray for Steph, Bobby, Charles, Kellen, Pat, Mackenzie, Mima, Janice, Scott, Katie, Nick, Marcella, Libby, Mike, David, Carrie, Gloria, Noreen, Tim, Eric, Sue, Sam, Kathy, Diane, Alan, Brittany, Arthur, and Matthew. Please add your prayers silently or in your hearts. God of mercy, hear our prayers for all who are in need. 
God of grace, we pray for those who have died, for the faithful in every generation who have worked for justice, for prophets who called us to racial reconciliation, for martyrs who died because of hatred, and for all the communion of saints. Make us faithful to your call to proclaim your good news by word and example, and bring us at last into the glorious company of the saints in light. We pray for Sandra Scully. Please add your prayers silently or in your hearts. God of grace, hear our prayers for those who have died. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and one another. Almighty God, source of all that is, giver of every good gift, you create all people in your image and call us to love one another as you love us. We confess that we have failed to honor you in the great diversity of the human family. We have desired to live in freedom while building walls between ourselves and others. We have longed to be known and accepted for who we are while making judgments of others based on the color of their skin or the shape of features or the varieties of human experience. We have tried to love our neighbors individually while yet benefiting from systems that hold those same neighbors in oppression. Forgive us, holy God. Give us eyes to see you as you are revealed in all people. Strengthen us for the work of reconciliation rooted in love. Restore us in your image to be beloved community, united in our diversity even as you are one with Christ and the Spirit, holy and undivided Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now let us pray together the Lord's Prayer as our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus said to the disciples, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. My friends, the peace of Christ be always with you. Let us greet one another with the sign of peace by texting a few of our friends, perhaps people we sit near when we are in church, or um, our friends, our church friends far and wide, or the family sitting on the sofa with us right now.
while we finish sharing the piece, our Vestry Person of the Week will fill us in on some of our announcements. Good morning, I'm Dennis Fitzgibbons, your Vestry Person of the Week, and with some announcements for the week ahead. Last week, the Vestry sent out a survey to everyone in the parish, and we had a great response, which we thank you for. Uh, we have decided to open the survey until June 10th, so that any of you who haven't had a chance to respond will be able to do so. And we really want to hear from everyone, or as many people as possible, so thank you in advance for doing that. And this will help us move forward, making our plans about further decisions on reopening the church and all things St. Bart's. If you'd like to stay connected and up to date on what's going on, please continue to check the St. Bart's website for prayers, information, resources, and links. And check your email for news and notes from Nina. A few items here, Friendship House. Because of the impact on jobs and finances, many of the residents there are feeling strapped for a lot of items, including razors, shaving cream, body wash, and toothpaste. There will be a plastic box labeled Friendship House under the wooden bench that sits below the overhang at the front of the church. And also, please know financial contributions are welcomed and can be mailed directly to Friendship House, 390 Lincoln Street, South Portland, Maine, 04106. Clink bags are available. We're still collecting, recycling old bottles for deposit and bags are available under the wooden bench that sits below the overhang at the front of St. Bart's. Thanks for your continued support on that. We're still looking for people to help out with making sew or sewing masks. We have simple patterns of fabric to give you. You can pick up and drop off at 3 Church Street in Yarmouth. If you can't get out, Lee Kirchner, Yarmouth Aging in Place and CV Task Force member, will pick up and deliver for you. Uh, her email is available on the website or contact Mary Calvin at 713-385-4708. Again, 713-385-4708. The Monday knitters are still gathering every week and I understand this is really popular. All handicrafts really. We hope that you'll be able to join them on Monday for handicrafts gathering on Zoom. Again, check Nina's news and notes for the invitation. The Yarmouth Food Pantry is in need of the following items. Pasta sauce, baked beans, no vegetarian please. Jelly, cereal, canned vegetables and fruit, rice, canned beans, tuna, laundry detergent, shampoo, dish soap, ground coffee, which will, if it's in a large can, will be bagged into smaller portions. Please place donations at the rear of the First Parish Church in the basket by the food pantry door. Thank you. Some new information from St. Elizabeth's Essentials Pantry. The pantry reopened with a limited outdoor distribution on June 2nd. They're not accepting any donations of kitchenware and bedding yet. St. Barks will provide volunteers to help on Tuesday, June 23rd from 8.30 to 11 a.m. All volunteers are asked to wear a mask and gloves. If you volunteer, you can choose from helping outside, at a safe distance, handing bags of items to our neighbors in need, or inside St. Luke's sorting products with social distancing. Both are welcome for volunteers. We continue to need certain items which can be donated through our Amazon wish list from the safety of your home. Go to our website or your email for the place to click for that resource. Many thanks for your help for the pantry. Any questions, please contact Ann Jacobs and Pam Hobson. Last announcement, gardening and weeding at St. Bart's. We are, proposing, we are proposing to gather on June 12th from 9 to 11 a.m. to tend to the Memorial Garden, pulling weeds, dividing ginger, spreading pine needles, and pruning here and there. If you feel more comfortable working on your own, please go anytime the weather suits you. The front garden's in need of attention throughout the summer as well. Weeding assistance at any time is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for tools, they are in the garden shed, if you need a cart, etc. 
that's the end of the announcements. We also have a list of useful resources during this pandemic. Here's a good one. Healing Prayers. The Pastoral Care Committee is now available to offer healing prayers upon request, either by phone or video call. If you would like to arrange such a call, please contact Barbara Barheit or Pam Hobson, and they will schedule a convenient time with one of the committee members. Their contact information is in our directory. There are now day-by-day uh, daily inspirational meditations in the little booklet available at the church. We have copies, left copies on the porch at St. Bart's. Stop by any time and pick up a copy. Pocket size and large print of versions are available. Lee Kirchner of Yarmouth Aging in Place states that if you need assistance for such things as grocery shopping or other needs, including emotional first aid, and boy, we could all shoot some of that right now, is available, you can call the Yarmouth Helpline Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at 846-4763. Again, 846-4763. And Lee reminds us that if you have questions as a senior, there, the senior resource specialist, Michelle Gravois, can answer. Please call her at 835-9866. Again, 835-9866. Another interesting item is that we have Ask an Epide Epidemiologist, two Yarmouth resident doctors, Sharon McConnell and Gid Parrish, have a weekly Zoom session on Thursdays to talk about the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic. These presentations or sessions have brief presentations, but they hope to leave most of the time for questions and discussion. This occurs on Thursdays, 4 to 5.30 p.m. There is a link to Zoom for that meeting also on the website. Or check your email for this, e this information. Lastly, please remember the main frontline warm line available to frontline healthcare providers and first responders who are under a lot of stress and emotional discomfort uh, during this pandemic. They are able to call this free support line where trained callers can respond to their needs. And those numbers are 866-367-4440 toll free or 207-221-8196. Again, this, this service is free to those on the front lines dealing with health care issues. That is the end of announcements and useful resources. Thank you very much. For our concluding prayer, let us pray. Heal us, O God, from all our afflictions and keep us steadfast in your love. Bind up our wounds, raise us from death, and lead us to fullness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, Amen. May God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And may the grace of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. My friends, our closing hymn will follow the dismissal. Go to a waiting world alive with the hope of Christ. Go to a troubled world bearing the peace of Christ. Go to a searching world enacting the love of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia. Alleluia.
is true.